Speed kills. In 2019, 9,478 Americans lost their lives from speeding, contributing to more than a quarter of all traffic fatalities in the year. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration predicts that speed-related crashes cost the U.S. more than $40 billion each year. But the emotional toll for those left behind is immeasurable. I think we don't really think about this issue. I um, started speaking out because it was horrific to bury your child. And I would not want this to happen to anyone else. Speed limits were created to avoid situations like what happened to the Coens. Yet, millions of Americans continue to speed every year. Nearly half of all the drivers surveyed have sped at least 15 miles per hour over the limit on freeways. A lot of that is just part of our culture, right? We have a culture of basically driving, you know, of sort of trying to achieve the speed limit as a target rather than a limit. And maybe even, oh, you know, it's fine if I go 10, 10 miles or so above the speed limit, like nobody's gonna ticket me. But some experts argue that the problem goes even further. The current speed limits might be too unrealistic to have any impact on how fast people drive on the road. People drive the way the road is built, that's what happens, and doing anything else in terms of speed limits is just simply wasting your time. So just how effective are speed limits in the United States? And how can they make our roads safer? Many experts and advocates believe that lowering the speed limit is effective in saving more lives. The first thing to keep in mind is that a lot of people think that speed limits have a linear or sort of like direct relationship to severity of crashes. In fact, the, that's just not true. A person hit by a car traveling at 35 miles per hour is five times more likely to die than a person hit by a car traveling at 20 miles per hour. And that's what happened to my son. He was 12 years old. He was just trying to get from school to soccer practice. He stopped off here for a snack, and that was it. I kissed him a goodbye that morning, and I never got to see him alive again. Everyone can be slightly inconvenienced to save a life. Studies have also shown a strong correlation between how high the speed limits are set and how many traffic fatalities are on the road. Just a 5 mile per hour increase in the maximum speed limit led to an 8.5% increase in fatalities on freeways and a 2.8% increase on other roads. It's believed that speed limit increases have directly led to more than 36,000 deaths between 1993 and 2017. And when we've seen even a five mile per hour reduction in speeds in cities like Seattle, in Portland, in Boston, we have seen that there are decreases in the number of accidents or, or, or collisions, actually, that are happening on our streets. One of those tools, one of those very important tools to eliminating the bloodshed on our roads is lowering our speed limits. It's proven to work. I mean, we need to take a data-driven approach and put in place the solutions that save lives. Speed limits today are usually set by state and local governments based on their own engineering and traffic surveys. They can vary quite a bit from state to state, but most of them are set based on the same method known as the 85th percentile rule. The 85th percentile is a, uh, is a tool used by traffic engineers to give them a starting point for setting speed limits and it's defined as the speed below which 85% of drivers were already going on a road. So where they go out and they take speed measurements on the road for a couple of days, and then they say, okay, what speed are 85% of these people going at or below? And, and that's where we'll start because that's what we think of as what drivers consider to be a safe speed. Despite being the most standard method utilized by traffic engineers, most states fail to follow the rule by the book. A 2012 report from the Federal Highway Administration discovered that many agencies often set the speed limit much lower than the suggested speed. 
There is also the problem of conflicting legislation. While Florida's Department of Transportation claims to support the 85th percentile rule, state legislatures already establish maximum speed limits for varying roads. A lot of the policymakers don't actually understand the traffic engineering of this. Um, and so it becomes very politicized. So what you get is a lot of political pressure and pressure from communities to say, hey, we want a lower number on the sign. It makes them feel better, but it doesn't actually make the roadway safer and it doesn't actually change the speeds that people are driving at on those roads. The effectiveness of the 85th percentile has also come into question. More recent studies have discovered there is no evidence that setting the speed limit at the 85th percentile led to the lowest crash rate. We should be looking at the level of activity on the street, the types of conflicts on the street, the, the environment that you're in and who's using the street. But essentially what we do now is allow drivers to say, I want to go as fast as I want to go. and we set the speed limit based on that, including those who are actually exceeding the existing speed limit. Basically, it's like saying, if you engage in bad behavior, we're gonna reward it and let you go even faster. I mean, what other policy works that way? What other policy says, you know, do a really crappy job and we'll just make the crappy job the norm? Other engineers have also discovered an unexpected flaw. If you raise the speed limit to the 85th percentile, most people will stick around that. What we've seen is that uh, that 15 percent that uh, tends to be above that, when you raise the speed limit, they're the ones who typically jump up to an even higher speed, and, and those are the guys that are causing crashes. So that is the big problem with the 85th percentile. Some experts, however, remain skeptical on whether speed limits have an actual impact on how fast people drive. There is this mistake, which is this idea that if you lower the speed limit, you actually are going to get lower speed. You, that doesn't actually happen. There's been numerous studies from the Federal Highway Administration. There was a, a very extensive study, probably the best one ever done. Um, and it, it clearly shows that there is little to no effect on the actual speeds that people drive based on the number on the sign. If research has proven anything, the safety of a road might not depend on how high or low the speed limits are set, but how much it's based on the way the road is built. Studies have shown very clearly that um, drivers uh, choose their speed, and when I say choose their speed, I mean they react to their environment, and so they travel at a speed at which they feel safe and comfortable based on the design of the road, the type of vehicle they're traveling in, and also, you know, the, the development around that road and what's going on on the road at that particular moment in time. Speed limit should be set based on the setting that the road is located within, rather than sort of, you know, decades of practice about highway rule setting. So in a typical urban environment, we should not be thinking, oh yeah, let's set our speed limits at, you know, let's start with 55 and say, should we go up or down from there? Or even let's start with, you know, some rule that again is based on highway research. We actually should be setting our speed limits in urban areas for urban settings. And that's just not the way that we do it now. A better redesign of our roads could also drastically improve the safety of our roads. What we've seen is uh, that long, straight, flat roads tend to uh, lead to increased speeds because it just feels so safe. One thing we can do is make those roads less straight, build in some curvature to it in order to sort of force people to slow down. Another thing they can do to slow you down is, is putting speed bumps. And, and that slows you down because if you try to go fast over a speed bump, you feel it and, and it can even do some damage to your car, so you don't do it twice. Another thing they can do is, uh, is have fewer lanes because if it's, if it's a narrow space that you're going through, you tend to feel less safe and so you slow down. And, and, they, and they can do it by narrowing the lane, they can do it by giving the appearance that the lane is narrower by, by the road markings. The future of traffic safety lies in how much we care to make the changes that are needed and the lawmakers who have the power to make it happen. After Sammy was killed, the next 18 months, two other classmates from his middle school were killed in traffic crashes. I mean, this is a crisis. We can and we must do better. 
and people do not have a right to speed on our roadways. We need to set policy that allows us to make the changes that need to be made, the physical changes that need to be made. And that policy needs to be representative of, again, our goals for sustainability, for equity, for safety, for public health. And the only way to do that is to knit all of these components together. We need to have policy that makes sense.